Well, let's start you guys up with a beautiful cold start. I mean, it's not freezing cold out, but it's cold enough where you guys are going to be looking right at the sun. Good placement, Ron. It's not too terribly cold out, but this is 45, 50 degrees. Not bad. So I never did uh, get help unhooking this trailer. I'm going to have to do that tomorrow because I need to grease that fifth wheel. So let's uh, retract these puppies up. Oh hey, they got my mud flap fixed. Thank you for doing that guys. Did that during the rain delay. And now I check in tires very scientifically, but all of them are around 80 to 100 PSI so far, which is good. So I'm gonna need some fuel for today. I'm under a quarter tank, so that's okay. I'm at home, I will grab some before I head out to the field. You know, I need to clear my windows, so that way you guys don't yell at me. Okay, you got the butt man back, and we're sitting here getting ready to fill everything up with diesel. We got four things to fill up. Okay, come here. Hold this up like that. Got it? Yeah. Okay, make sure that don't come out. That's what we're doing. Then we're going to knock this out. 50 acres maybe left. Nathan's going to grease everything up. So we can get ready to go. Game plan today is to get this done back over here, move everything up to Bellevue, and we'll start working on that tomorrow. So I think we got about three days up there, and then we'll come back down, get Ron's piece knocked out, Sturt's piece knocked out, and then I uh, open by the farm there's a little bit. So we're about whooping here. I think we got about 400 acres left, maybe 450. So we're rocking and rolling here in. Jackson, no, actually we're in Clinton County. So, Tate, any word for wisdom today? No. Come on, what do you tell those YouTubers? Ta-ta for now. He says ta-ta, we can keep that in there now. All full of fuel, there's the neighbor, rocking out full with their brand new 7150, and eight case on each Well, that was fun, now that I got all dirty grease in my truck, I basically got all the brakes and axles greased. I need to do the trailer, I need to do my fifth wheel at some point, but that'll be a tomorrow job. I am noticing there's a leak right here. I'm gonna tighten that up. I think it's this, whatever that thing is. By looking at it more, yes, it was my power steering pump. I get that. Oh, okay, now we can fuel up and go. So I heard Curtis pull in, but I have no idea where he went. So when he's dumping, but I don't know. Okay, there goes the first truck there. We're out of here. We got both combines going. And it's before one o'clock. You're rocking and rolling, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, rocking and rolling. One combine's way down there. One's up here. This is Nathan. I'm following him. Pants in the other combine. We got lots of fuel, 163 gallons. So let's get this field knocked out and get to the next Bellevue, I hope. So let's go. Pulling into the field. Sean's here. Didn't know, didn't know he knew how to drive a grain cart anymore. He helped us quite a bit last couple years. Just haven't needed him a whole lot this year and he's been busy with his own harvest. I think he's all done now and he can help us out when we need him. A little hilly up here. Not my favorite farm, not. But we're knocking it out. One kernel at a time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, one kernel at a time. Ah, oh, rookie. First time running grain car for us this year and it's doing her heavy this way. Ain't gonna hook good help these days. Kid. Doing good, Sean. Man, she clean. Cleaning the windows. Important stuff. And here he comes. And there's Tater Tot Casserole. He went out and helped me feed my cows this morning. Had to give him a couple bales. Oh, he had to make them happy. 
think I got one more pass over here and probably two passes over there, so then there's about 10, 12 acres over there. Gobbling up that corn. There's Nathan. Making quick work of this field. So we basically get this field split in half by a hay strip there. So Nathan's almost got this half done. Pat's working on the northwest corner. Man, look at those clean windows. We can actually see. We need to clean the inside of the windshields, but pretty good on the sides. Hey, we're stopping to dump because once again, we got hills and they go up and down and up. So to be safe, we stop and we unload here. Doing pretty good. Trucks are keeping up pretty good. So we got three truck drivers, two grain carts, two combines. It's the Yellow Brick Road. For some reason there was corn flying out of Jeff's truck that he's empty. It was untarped, but I'm guessing uh, there's just some corn on his rails that is slowly flying off, but he's got a lot of corn flying off. Jeez. I mean, not a lot, but probably a bushel or two, but still. Going slowly making its way up. We'll start seeing some of these things. Long augers, 84 feet for this time. That's just a low flow I started with, and you'll really start seeing it right about now. 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 There it is. You can see less of an air gap. So we're dumping this load into the pit. Or not the pit, into the ground pile. So we got quite a bit of room left. Before we're gonna move, we can probably put about three or four more trucks. Basically, we can uh, fill it up until we get close to that auger. Don't want to get it too close, otherwise you'll plug the auger and snap your shoe bolt. That's me how I know. That last year. We got a little bit of room in time yet. There's Larry cut, or uh, weed whacking. Well, that wraps up this part of the field. Now we got that little piece way down there. It's about 10, 11, 12, I don't know, acres, something like that. But we'll get her going, get this knocked out. Just got emptied out. Hey, my mother's here. I'm gonna go say hi to her. So we're emptied out. Now we're gonna head back. Gotta be getting close. I'm guessing I'll have, I have two more loads I'll bring back. Because every load that I bring, two other semis are gone. That's roughly five acres of semi. So therefore, every time I go back, there's 15 more acres that are done. And that uh, that field's only 60 acres of corn this year. So therefore, it's not a whole lot left. Be four trips total. Made one last night. Curtis is backing in. It's always fun when we gotta do this, but like I said in the last video, this is gonna save us five grand, hopefully. That's the hope at least. All we can do is hope nothing in farming is guaranteed from the weather to your crops or your prices. Everything's in limbo. Who needs to gamble when you're farming? That's what my uncle likes to say. Okay, I've been sitting there for about five minutes. Truck just pulling in and I have my red lollipop sucker. What do we decide, purple or blue? I still say purple. Let's get this thing unloaded. We got 57,000 pounds. Well, Budley Man is uh, <laughs> a little full, just just a little bit. Oh, he's got a little bit of room in that back bow. Oh, you could have fit a little bit more on, Budley. Come on. Oh, Budley's got 57,000 on. That'll be good enough for me. There's Sean rolling across the hill. And what's that already empty? Please. Never mind, I might wait here to go get that Sean fill me up. So the bigger field in the east is done. We're working on the west field. The bushels are coming off in a hurry. I'll probably come back one more time and that'll be about it. And per grain cart etiquette, full cart has the right of way. Out with one, in with the other. That'll be full enough. Time to bounce. Keep this train a moving. 
Okay, I thought the other side was steep. Look at this. Holy cow. That's a combine way down there. Looks like a toy combine. RPMs were at 2,900. That's why it was beeping. I hate these hills. Hunters. Pheasant hunters or deer hunters? Pheasant hunters. Yeesh! 9RX with a massive VT. That is a unit right there. Hey, he's going up the mountain. Way over there. That's not even the steepest one. There's one steeper, they say. I don't like it. That's why I'm cheating. I'm coming out here. I'm not going up that hill. No way. I'm coming over here, going up there, and then cutting across. So Now that there is the steep hill. That is a combine over there. I know it's small, but no part of it. We're probably going to be moving to get either after my load or the load after mine so i'm just double checking to make sure that we got room which we still got another foot on this backside, so that's perfectly fine just double checking fill the shed's always interesting but uh it's just not not just not something you see every day it's unconventional but it works for our operation it's definitely not gonna be a long-term thing we built the shed with this purpose in mind you can kind of see there's six foot tall concrete walls that is to kind of bear the load of um of the corn because right now we get about 15,000 bushel of corn in there 15,000 times uh, 56 or 60 for my easy math that's 900,000 pounds it's almost a million pounds of corn down there it's quite a bit so you need to have concrete to kind of support that there might be more there might even be close to 20 loads in there somewhere you might be wondering what the heck do we got this plywood sitting here for well as we fill, put another load or two in, this corn's gonna come out of this axle. Well, if it buries this axle and you try to pull on this auger, this axle's gonna stay put, this auger's gonna move, you're gonna kick your auger. So we actually found that it's, uh, we put this board here, it kind of deflects the weight and it keeps the weight off this axle, that way you can move your auger ahead here in the next load. Hey, we're back in the hills. Got Tater Tot Casserole riding with Nathan. Pat up there, Sean in that one. Crazy hills, look at this. That's straight down, straight down. Make sure you're done, Nathan, before you come down that steep part. Too late for that. Yep, we're gonna have to move after this one because we have less than a foot up there, but the risk that we have is when you get empty, most of your weight is on that part of the auger, that side dips a little, so it raises up there, that dip, plug your uh, plug your auger, sear your bolt. This is the bright side, we're not getting close to the axle yet. We'll probably just move ahead another five feet or so after this and put another five loads in. This is more about when you get close, sometimes it dips down. my stupid camera in the tractor we move the auger over into that corner did you ever hear the term rolling hills in eastern Iowa we got two combines side by side so we're knocking out 20 rolls of the crack but you can see these are called rolling hills and I don't like it we stopped to unload because if you can look I can't see over that hill because it's straight up well, that put me behind in rotation, but that's okay. I've been behind all day. Last rotation, I went to say hi to mom. Rotation before that, I was greasing my truck. Oh, well. Let's hit the road. Well, that's a common sight. Paint car waiting for me. Huh. Well, let's see. It's a beautiful golden hour out. Brought my drone with me. If the batteries are charged, let's get the drone up in the air.
everybody got it whooped. About two more spins and we'll be done. There's tater tot. And then on my left side, we got Pat coming in the 7088, making his last spin going to the south. It's gonna be a beautiful sunset again. Hopefully we get to see it in the tractor. So that'll be his last go that way, and then Nathan's got one more here. He'll come back for one more and we'll be done. She's getting full. This is my last load of wet for the night, more than likely. I am going to dump this and then help Jeff load up with dry corn. But for both of us, I think we're both gonna load dry up. Don't know if we're gonna go uptown or what we're gonna do, but. We're gonna do something. We'll always do something. Okay, that wraps up another field. Curtis's field is done. I still got about 19,000 pounds on my tractor back there. And he'll probably have about that much on that one over there, maybe a tad more. So, on to hopefully Bellevue. I don't know what's going on. They're making a game plan right now. Good feeling to have this done. Look at that sunset. Wow, way over there, beautiful sunset. These guys are getting educated up here, looks like. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> How are you? Good, yourself? Good. The only kid. Yes, I said, Miss. Roughly anywhere from you know zero up to sixty thousand bushels in this shed. Each bushel of grain costs roughly twenty-five cents by the time you take it up town, pay them to put it in, pay them to take it out, to pay them to store it. It's five cents every time you pull in and pull it out, it's ten cents right there to put it in and pull out, sixteen cents to store it for three months grain. So that right there is twenty-six cents. Plus, you know, if you decide to store it longer, if you want to mess with, you gotta dry it down. This one right here is 17, 16 percent, something like that. We're going to blend it with some really dry corn, 15 percent corn. It's going to average out to 15 percent. And then that's going to basically go right in. So that's going to save us anywhere from 26 to 50 cents. Right there. And if we put 30,000 bushels in here, you do the math, it's going to be well over $5,000 of this thing. So that is why we are putting a big old pile on the ground. It stinks, but it is worth it in our end worth the extra hassle to do it. We said to leave things. I just found the game plan. We are heading to Bellevue. Oh, we gotta move the ladder. We're gonna stop at the farm. Got some, I got 19,000. He's got 25, Sean's got 25,000 over in that cart. So we'll stop there, get rid of that. And then we'll head up to Bellevue. So, put my flashers on. Let's go. Pat, you want to go next or how you want to do this? Pulling up with some dry corn, doing just what Jeff did. Curtis was dumping his load. And all the combine should be coming up over the hill here shortly. Not too long. Just sitting there they are right there. They're already almost here. A couple miles away. The lead combine's Nathan, because I can tell he's getting newer flashers. Trail combine is Pat. So when I'm doing this myself, I like to do front, front, back, and then right in the middle. That gets me the closest. And there's Nathan. Just kidding. And that, that's Nathan and uh, or that's uh, Pat and Sean. My dad was the second, was the trailing combine, air quote. Let's take this thing up town. Okay, we just got back to the Preston farm. We got to unload carts. We got about 25,000 pounds in there, and I got about 20. Semi's coming out now. The semi's gonna pull in here. And then we will uh, drive underneath the semi and unload. And then head to Bellevue. Yahoo! Bellevue, get it done. Beautiful Jackson County, Iowa, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta love Jackson County. Come visit me. Up there. There's a fire call this morning.
press and respond to. And I'm wondering if that's one right there. That's something. I just don't know what it is. Jeff is just getting done dumping uptown. And I'm just getting up here. Oh, my hunch is right. The fire department's out right now. I bet that is them right north of town. Just don't know what for. Appreciate you guys. You've been doing a lot, especially these last couple days. Man, pretty much the whole house is out. I don't want to be able to call them, but being able to call them is amazing. So like I said, thank you to all those volunteer firefighters, especially the ones that are around us and cover our area. There's never a dull moment down here at the farm. So we got downtime going on right now. So what Ron's doing is he's taking dry corn out of that, filling up a semi and taking it around next door and filling up the harvester so we can uh, make more room into that one. So there's always something going on. We just got done filling this semi up. So he's gonna back into this here. We're out of room. Oh, we got ourselves a big pile going on right here. As you can see, it's huge. Okay, this thing's loud, but this thing goes over. Now he's gonna unload it. Turn it. Down into there, up the auger, up there, into a big pile. What's up? Apparently this one up there is actually a farm accident. Talking to the lady at the elevator. Oh man, thoughts and prayers for them. Oof. Yeah, I heard from multiple different sources the helicopters at that accident over there. Uh, kind of right behind those bins. Man, I hope everyone's okay. Actually, yeah, you can see the lights right there. Hi, cabbage. These guys just got weaned. And I'd be whining too if I'd been away from my mother for the first time. So, real bad news, guys. Apparently that accident, that uh, those lights that I saw was a real bad accident. Somebody we know, little kid actually that's been on the YouTube channel before. Thoughts and prayers, because he got hurt real bad. <sighs> Makes me sick just thinking about it. It's a little somber. We just basically just sat and chatted for the last 30 minutes, talked about farm safety, talked about it basically just kind of decompressed. Cause like I said, we know the family real well. We farm next to them, we farm, do some custom work for them. It's just sad, sad deal guys. So just say a prayer for this little boy who got caught up and broke a lot of bones and is lucky to be alive. So now we're just gonna kind of take our time and go set, head, head north. We're going to uh, be safe about it because, oh, hello. We're gonna be safe about it. That way I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna go in front of them and flag. So at least on a Sunday night, shouldn't be a whole lot of traffic we're gonna have to deal with. We gotta make a pretty big move down some iffy roads. So that's like I said, we're gonna have a pilot car in front, pilot car in the back, just to be sure. Off we go. So we have Pat's Combine, the 7088 and the T8050. Grain cart behind him, then the 7150, and then the Budman in the Magnum 340. Okay, we got us a convoy heading up to Bellevue. You got a combine way up there, a grain cart, combine, truck, and then me. So we got a lot of stuff going on heading to Bellevue. Guys, did I have grease on my head that you haven't told me about all day? What the heck? Come on, you gotta tell me this type of stuff. I look like an idiot more than usual. So this is the one lane bridge. And this is the main reason why we need the flagger. But I'll also go in front of Nathan because there's a narrow road. Narrow road up ahead as well, or kind of along the river. So I'm basically gonna get around this corner. It's a blind corner up to a one lane bridge. I'm gonna get around this corner up to the top of the hill just to flag down any vehicles that are coming. I haven't met a single vehicle though, so hopefully we'll be lucky. I haven't met a single car until right now. Man, I am glad I'm here because they would have met right at the wrong time. Whew. Lucky, lucky, lucky. So Pat and Sean pulled off and they're taking gravels the rest of the way. Big reason for that is Pat's wider. 
he wouldn't be able to fit down this road very well at all. Nathan is narrower and so is, well, it's mainly just Nathan and my dad. So they're taking this way. I'm still gonna flag him because it, it is a narrower road at night. So it doesn't hurt anything. Might as well. Don't need to rush to get our semis up here anyway. Pulling over, letting some cars go by. Alvin. So we're just letting some cars go by that was kind of behind us for the last couple miles because it wasn't a good spot to pass. Appreciate all the, all the patience, guys. Farmers are, farmers are still out this time of year. They appreciate not endangering our lives or yourselves. And of course, we're meeting a lot of traffic as we get into town. Town's gonna be the tightest. We definitely wanna have spotters if we can. Well, everyone, you got the butt man and we're in Bellevue, Iowa, which means we're in beautiful Jackson County, Iowa. Look at that. That's cool. Looks like they're putting the Christmas lights up in Bellevue. It's kind of cool with it because they do it all along the river here, the riverfront. There's River Ridge Brewery. If you like brewery beer, they brew their own there. Even got a police escort through town. <laughs> nice. Perks of uh, having the police chief driving grain cart. Definitely don't need a police escort through town, but it is kind of handy. Oh, you don't have to worry about uh, traffic much because you can kind of see Nathan is taking up two thirds of the road right now. Okay, not gonna lie, yeah, the police escort is really handy because Nathan, like I said, is two thirds of the road and having folks get over and stop is really handy. Thanks guys, appreciate it. All in the name of safety, I suppose. Thank you, Brandon. I'm assuming it's Brandon. Well, we I always go on the side of safety, so I called the police department and there they are. Brandon Coyne, hi Brandon. Gave us an escort through town so we could uh, get through. Yeah. What zoo are we going to? Top, on top. Mr. Weber out picking his corn. They're on his bin site. Getting her done there, Scott. Here comes Nathan. Okay, we made it up to the Bellevue farm. He's unloading his head, lowering it down right there. Then we're gonna hopefully knock a lot of this piece out yet tonight. Fill everything up, three semis in the green cart, and call her a night. It's about 7.15. You know, I made your bed quick. He's gonna make a spot in here so we can get the semis in here. 10 for I'll sit here for a little bit. So my GoPro died, so I can't film much. But basically, we're trying to open up a section of the field so the semis can get in. That's what Nathan's doing. So he took out 24 rows going west. Now he's gonna take out 48 rows going north. We're just gonna sit here on the side of the road, waiting for him to get opened up. Now Nathan's got enough opened up where the semis could come in. We basically had a lane right here, an easement lane that we park on. So those guys will get in there and get turned around. And I'm going to take them both back. Curtis will bring the other semi, other semi down, and I will, uh, Jeff and I will probably go get a vehicle and call her a night. Now this is how you knock out some corn. Two combines chasing each other up and down the field. Get out of my way, we got stuff to pick. Kind of cool, it's dark, but I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's kind of cool. Man, guys, it is a rough day for Jackson County. On the way home, we passed by an accident that uh, literally a car just drove off the side of the road into the trees, which is real close to the river. About two ambulances, seven or eight fire trucks, about the entire Belly Fire Department was there. So it's not a good day for Jackson County. So uh, hopefully I'm going to take my I'm just going to take my time when I go home, guys. Cause it's, it, it, oh, it's, it's been a rough day. Two air care ambulances to Jackson County and who knows what that, what that wreck's gonna turn out, but I pray it's, they don't need air care. Anyway, I'm gonna head home guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
hoping this is the last week of harvest, guys. Tomorrow starts the last week. Let's see. We shall see, I should say. So thank you guys so much for watching. For now. And before I close this video, guys, I just got two quick things. Well, actually, three quick things. One, the little boy who was uh, hurt in that farm accident, he did have to get flown to a major, a major hospital. He is all right. He's back on the farm. He's very lucky and can't wait to see him again. So I hope you're doing good, Case. Uh, two, I just want to thank everybody who bought merch. Merch is going to be, uh, it is getting made right now, and it will be uh, put in the mail here in the next week or two. And then three, deer season starts today. The day you guys are watching this is the deer, the, we, I will be out in the woods when you guys are watching this. So expect the first deer hunting video tomorrow. That's right, tomorrow. I will be up till about 2 a.m. editing this, putting it out there. It's going to be fun. I can't wait, guys. Deer season is here. It's exciting. Let's get excited. I hope you guys watch it. Stay tuned tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching.